Hi and welcome to my YouTube channel. This is uh, part two of another video called Are You Ready for the Incredible? As I've mentioned that I would be coming back to do another video to explain or describe what a prophetic heavenly encounter with the Lord, what I was shown in cloud pictures, that the Lord gives me cloud pictures. So before I continue with what that was and the prophetic meaning of the symbolism in the, the cloud pictures, I just wanted to share with you a few verses about the association between the Lord and clouds because it's all the way through the Bible, way back in the Old Testament, that the Lord appears in a cloud. So even as far back as Genesis, Genesis 9.14 says, Whenever I bring clouds over the earth and the rainbow appears in the clouds, I will remember my covenant with you and with all living creatures. 2 Chronicles 6.13-14 to 14 says, Then the temple of the Lord was filled with a cloud, and priests could not perform their service because of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord filled the temple. Exodus 3 and 4 was the story about the burning bush, where God told Moses the signs. Now, we know in Moses' time that we often hear about cloud of the Lord uh, turning up at the tent of meetings. Nahum 1.3 says, his way is in the whirlwind and the storm and the clouds are the dust of his feet. Luke 21, 27. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the cloud with power and great glory. Mark 13, 27 says, it says he will come in the clouds of heaven. Acts 1 to 9. The text says when Jesus was taken up before their eyes and a cloud hid him from their sight. Revelation 1 7 Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Psalm 147 8 The psalmist states, It is God who covers the heavens with clouds, who prepares the rains for the earth, and who makes the grass to grow on the mountain. Exodus 13 21 And I, the Lord, went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead them along the way and a pillar of fire to give them light to go by day and night. 1 Corinthians 10 7-2 Israel's crossing of the Red Sea is described as our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. Exodus 19 16 says God's presence on Mount Sinai thunders and lightnings and a thick cloud upon the mount voice of a trumpet smoke mount quaked greatly by god's voice leviticus 10 1 the lord says for i will appear in a cloud upon the mercy seat the mount of transfiguration matthew 17 5 or mark 9 7 a bright cloud overshadowed them and behold a voice out of the cloud which said this is my son in whom i am well pleased there's more in Job, Elihu points that God spread the clouds over the earth to op operate his hydrologic cycle. Neither Job or Elihu knew what that was anyway. They discussed it in uh, Job 37, 14 to 17. And God asks Job, can you lift up your voice to the clouds that abundance of waters may cover you? Isaiah 14, 14, God is the most high above the clouds. Psalm 97, 2 and 104, 3. God treading the clouds under his feet. Psalm 104. Who makes the clouds his chariot? Psalm 18, 7 to 15. His pavilion around him were dark waters and thick clouds of the sky. That's also in 2 Samuel 22, 8 to 16. And Genesis 1, 1. God is the creator of all things in heaven and earth. He therefore created the clouds. He is the maker of water. He is the provider of all the things that we have on the earth. He is a God of provision. Now this wonderful cloud picture that the Lord gave to me used certain biblical symbolism, which is important in deciphering the context of the prophetic word. So what I saw, and this came after praying, I asked the Lord, do you have a prophetic word for me? And this began about mid-August, and I specifically asked, for August 2024, because I had heard a little birdie told me that somebody was asking 
or a prophetic word. And I've had a lot of difficulty in releasing this particular word. My videos haven't been uploading to my creator studio. And so this is my third attempt. And honestly, if it doesn't make it, then I'll say it was the Lord's intention that this didn't air. But I could figure more than is the issue. It's not that the Lord didn't want this message to air but that I hadn't presented it in a way that was pleasing to the Lord. In delivering a prophetic word or a prophetic vision or any anything about that the Lord gives me, it's for the benefit of others. It's sharing the knowledge and the love of God. But I do carefully say to the Lord, if it is not your intention for this to be seen or heard, then stand in the way of it, Lord, and stop it from progressing. So if it is the Lord's will, this will make it to my YouTube page, and if it isn't the Lord's will, it won't get there. Nonetheless, I wanted to share with you up front the number of verses in the Bible that talk about God's presence being found in clouds. That is a remarkable thing, that the relationship I have with the Lord has involved this incredible experience of prophetic uh, words coming out of things that the Lord points and shows me in clouds. Now, look, I look at clouds all the time, and they're fairly dull in colour, sometimes they're shiny and bright. There, there's many occasions where you can make a picture out of a cloud. This is different to that. This is sometimes a moving picture, almost like an animation, and that was the case with this particular cloud picture. What happened was after I prayed, I went outside and took a seat out, out the back, and the, the sky was mostly clear, but as I looked heading in the south, in the distance, there was a cloud in the sky. As my eyes lay on the cloud, it all of a sudden began to form into a picture. First it was a bull, then it was an oxen. In fact, I wasn't sure if it was a cow or an oxen, but it had horns, so it couldn't have been a cow. Then, whammo, it, it just, the real feature of this picture was a ram, but it jumped out as though I was in a, a 3D cinema or wearing a pair of 3D glasses. I expressed a little bit of concern at first when I'd seen the bull because in the Bible, bulls can signify Baal and there is bull worshipping. But the Lord very quickly moved this picture into this massive ram that just came forth and came forward just like this. Uh, and it all happened very quickly. And then after the ram, which had clearly two very strong horns that curled, both exactly the same size. And I mentioned that because Clearly, it doesn't relate to a Daniel vision. I'll tell you what it relates to. More about Isaac and the provision of a ram in the thicket when Abraham was ordered by God to sacrifice his son. But when they arrived there, and it was a very emotional time, and Abraham didn't want to sacrifice his son, there was he trusted in the Lord. And then there was the ram in the thicket. That is a symbol of divine provision. It was a test of faith. And it was a symbol that it's telling us as a biblical story that God will provide. I take it that as I researched this word, it was evident that a couple of things, uh, one of them came through Psalm 148, which is a psalm about the exalted horn of Psalm 148, being rescued from oppression. God exalts the horn of somebody. He's bringing victory to the oppressed. And when I read this amidst my research on rams, oxen and bulls, it became evident, and that's how I came up with the word, the new season and open doors. This is a time where the oppressed, uh, something will be broken. And I believe, very exciting time in the body of Christ, where there's an awakening a revival within the body of Christ, a time where people awaken to the miraculous, where people will be touched by the Lord and enabled by the Lord to move forward in their salvation in ways that they didn't even know was possible. I believe that in the body of Christ that's going to experience these really glorious mysteries that God had prepared for us from before the beginning of time, it's for all of us. And I hope to encourage you with this word. What we've got here, the ram is a symbol that represents an idea of giving something up, something valuable. In this case, the ram takes the place of Isaac, embodying the concept of substitution. The story of the ram's presence is in pivotal moments from Abraham and Isaac to visions of Daniel. The ram's reoccurring appearance in the Bible 
does give us insight into faith, trusting in God. The provision of the ram symbolises divine provision. At a critical moment, it symbolises God's ability to provide to intervene in human affairs. It reassures the faithful of God's presence in times of trial. So on one hand, the exalted horn of, horn of Psalm 148 is telling us that there's an oppression that's going to be lifted. But it looks like it could be also a time of trial. What the Lord is saying through this word is the answer is to trust in him, to have faith in the same way that the kind of faith of Abraham. The symbol of obedience, the ram's acceptance in place of Isaac also symbolizes the virtue of obedience to divine will. It illustrates the belief that faith involves trust and submission to God's greater plan. And that's very much what my Surrender to Jesus playlist is all about. And I am so blessed that the Lord brought that into my life at that moment. But it did come through struggle. And today, looking back, it would have been probably the most difficult struggle I've experienced in my life. However, you never know what's around the corner. The Lord did say in this life there will be tribulations. This, this prophetic word that I'm sharing today, the bull had significance in terms of Aaron, priests of Moses' time, in that Aaron was asked to sacrifice a bull and that was to make peace with the Lord and an atonement of sin. So that's what the bull represents. The ram really is indicating we can trust that the Lord will provide or in our trials or all the Lord is looking for is us to turn to him and put our faith completely in him. In Genesis 2 2, Abraham was asked to sacrifice Isaac, demonstrating unwavering faith and obedience as he prepares to carry out God's commandment. There was divine intervention and substitution. An angel called out to Abraham, stopping him at the last moment, and Abraham sees the ram caught in the thicket by its horns. Abraham seized the sign from God, and that's what we're to do. We are to trust in the Lord, that the Lord has a plan for us, and it's a plan of goodness. The Lord works all things in our life for goodness. We are to trust in that, to not give way to fears and doubts to remain in knowledge that the Lord's strength is made perfect in our weakness, but also in knowledge that the Lord is well able to provide and to substitute whatever it is that's valuable to us that we may feel that we have to give up, whether we're willing to do that, a test of faith. The Lord says, hold on. He says, I know what you're going through. He says, look to my love. For you and trust in the fact that as it is written that the Lord's purpose is ultimately a good one an oxen means being determined regardless of the risks an ox means hard work and redemption through the act of self-sacrifice the ox is associated with Luke the evangelist whom's gospel began with a sacrifice in numbers 15 11 there's a heading Supplementary offerings. The Lord gave Moses an instruction to speak to the Israelites. Many instructions about offerings. A bull in verse 8 for a special vow or fellowship offering with other items, fine flour, hin oil, hin wine, and a grain offering. It will be an offering made by fire, an aroma pleasing to the Lord. Each bull, ram, lamb, or goat is to be prepared this way. This word is around about the bull, meaning make peace with the Lord, the oxen to have self-determination to pull through and to look to the Lord, to find strength and provision and guidance in the Lord, that it's a test of faith, but to rest in the knowledge that the Lord provides. And I love you. And I pray that all things go well in the coming days. In the name of Jesus, I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit for your help wealth, wisdom, understanding, revelation, knowledge, the eyes of your heart to be opened and that the Lord will bless your eyes and your ears. And I pray that you likewise will be absolutely blown away by the amazing experience of the presence of Lord in your life and heart and home, in your circumstances.
and in the life and circumstances of those you pray for. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Good night.